Divergent. My name is Beatrice, but just call me Tris. And guess what? I'm not like everybody else. I inhabit, inhibit, inhabit, inhibit, inhibit multiple facets, which make me a danger to society. It's Divergent. Are you a young adult? Because you're going to like this movie. Banana. Banana. I was hoping you'd come in there with a, with a backup chorus, or maybe you'd be like, You're gonna like this movie! You're gonna like this movie! Yeah! Uh-uh! There's three of them. Should've just been three of them. Now there's only gonna be three of them. Cause they tried to extend beyond well, uh, its... It's, um, reach. Yep. And it's... We're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Much like... The, the studio. Dive, yes, the studio. That the, made uh, the Divergent which would Trilogy? Be, uh, yeah, what do we call this one? Um, I don't know. It's Lionsgate. Summit Lionsgate. Summit in Lionsgate. Lionsgate produced such classics as Crank and Crank High Voltage. Yeah, does it have like a most known four thing on their Wikipedia page? Let's have a look. Uh, no. Crank. Films. Lionsgate Films. Crank. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, so today, welcome to... Uh, Filmy franchisee Fortnite's. Yep. Um, Fortnite's. Ooh, naughty. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're today we're talking about the Divergent series. What? I know. <laughs> we're not fourteen-year-old girls. Ah, uh, older than fourteen. They say shit in this movie. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of off-screen deaths. <laughs> the, these movies are for some like non-existent age between seventeen and. I was gonna obviously uh, like, I was gonna say seventeen and twenty one, but obviously there's ages in there. What I mean is that demographic doesn't exist. The, yeah, the yeah, demographic yeah. they think exists doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Because no one's immature enough to find these as good movies, nor mature enough to be interested in them. Yeah, we didn't like these movies. Yeah, yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves again. <laughs> so the Divergent series uh, consists of, currently consists of. Three movies, uh, Divergent, the Diver- Divergent series Insurgent, and the Divergent series Elegant. Right. Um, Weird that you didn't call it the Divergent, but kept to your theme. <laughs> hard so G's. The first Welcome to was, Hard G's. This is a podcast where, where we pronounce things. Richard and I talk about things like gnomes and how gnarly they are. And man, why would I go straight for silent G's? Yeah, that's a whole different... We don't get into that into episode three. <laughs> Elegant. <laughs> We don't get that till episode eight. Eight, <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, so uh, they're uh, based on the book series by uh, Lucy Fisher. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one was directed by Neil Berger. Mm-hmm. It was Berger. Oh. Uh, it's doing the opposite Not thing. Die Bergen. Uh, and the second two were directed by Robert Schwinke. 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 So before we get into it, um, and there's, so there's three books. Yeah. Like Divergent, Insurgent, and Allegiant. And Allegiant. these books, they fit into this now defunct category or <laughs> genre called young adult fiction. And if you if you don't know anything, which I, I a lot of people probably don't. Yeah, um, I, I, I envy you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this genre or this subgenre includes such titles as The Hunger Games and Maze Runner. And maybe, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Yeah, so basically what we're talking about... Sorry, it was Veronica Roth wrote the... the what did you trilogy. say? Uh, Lucy Fisher. She was a producer, and I just said it too. Um, the 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 trademarks of this subgenre are dystopia, strong, usually female lead. Yeah, Maze Runner is male. Yeah, that's like, true. Um, um, but yeah, like who's a female lead who's just like you? Yeah, yeah, and. The, there's there's a bit of just like a lot of people would put Harry Potter or Twilight into this category. I disagree. I I'd would say, put Twilight. Now Twilight um just precedes it. Twilight is uh, it's not romanticizing just, it's, vampire. The va- it's young adult, but it's not dystopian. Yes, that's that's the difference. Yeah. Is that young adult's been around for a while, but dystopia had its day in the sun, and as we'll come to find out, Divergent itself killed it. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. So. Harry Potter is kind of separate from it, yeah, I'd say. Because they're good. Yeah. Whereas, like, <laughs> um, Twilight kind of spawned a uh, supernatural romance, yeah. sort of young adult subgenre. Yeah. Um, which was one of those, like, people kind of taking the wrong lesson from Harry Potter, I guess. Mm-hmm. Spawned sure, Twilight. yeah. Um, and then that became that, and then, uh, like, I'd say The Hunger Games was spawned from that, and then everyone was yeah. like, shit, and then people took the wrong lessons from that. Yeah. So the, the Hunger Games, again, it, I, I don't rank the Hunger Games particularly high. 
Um, and of the big three, Hunger Games, Divergent, and Maze Runner, I'm I haven't seen most of what we. Well, I've seen actually I've probably seen over half of it thanks to this franchise. <laughs> um, I, seen the I haven't seen any of the Maze Runners, but I would hazard a guess that Divergent's the worst of the big three. Yeah, Maze Runner. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, Shall I tell people what they're about? Yeah, just specifically. Just so the three films. Um, the first one's called Divergent. And it's a, set in a post-apocalyptic Chicago and where everyone is split into five factions. And these factions include Dauntless, who are brave, Amity, who are peaceful, Erudite, who are intelligent, Abnegation, who are selfless, and Candor, who are honest. And what's great about that is that what the hell does Amity, Erudite, or Abnegation mean? Therefore, I don't remember what those three... You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, Dawnless like and Candor. Yeah, right. Dawnless and Candor, I, I can remember what they mean, but I don't... And they all sound the same. Amity, Erudite, Abnegation, they all sound like... Like, one of them starts with an E, but I thought it started with an A for <laughs> until I looked, up, looked it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's confusing. Anyway, uh, Triss, who is played by Shailene Woodley, who's much better than these movies, yeah. and I feel bad for her, because um, she kind of is, is sort of the queen of um, starring in movie series that don't go anywhere at the moment because she, she was going to play Mary Jane in the Amazing Spider-Man trilogy oh that's right yeah yeah. yeah she yeah. filmed yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty about that. yeah she like filmed scenes as Mary Jane yeah yeah and, and they, they were, were like cut. oh we'll bump them to the third film and then didn't make yeah, the third film I'd like to see what she looked like as Mary Jane yeah I love her she's so sweet anyway um, she's good in Big Little Lies which I've seen one episode of uh, and she's alright in The Fault in Our Stars though I would also put that in another subgenre of young adult fiction which is John Green yeah, John Green movies. <laughs> uh, so Triss is divergent, and or divergent, I apologise, meaning that she fits into <laughs> all of these factions. Also, she is both, she is all no, brave. No, not necessarily. No, because she's 100%. Yeah, but that's revealed later on. Right, so, okay, di- so divergent just means you fit into more than one. Okay, so, and once again, those are brave, peaceful, intelligent, selfless, and honest. So unlike everybody else in the real world, she inhabits all of these qualities. And she's just me, like you. I'm like me or you, because you know I'm not. I'm only selfless, and well, you're I'm only peaceful. Well, you hear yourself again. All right. Good. We'll get to it. Um. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Welcome so, to getting so, rid of ourselves. The <laughs> podcast where we talk about things too early. <laughs> so that um, I was going to make a Trump joke, but that'd be too late. That Trump will never get in. Yeah, that's um. That's a different podcast altogether. Yeah. Maybe we should start that one too. Um. So she's we're just we're, like we're just a year behind. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, actually. Yeah, a year behind a podcast by Richard yeah, Martin. Two guys. Alexander Jones. That, like. We don't read the news for a year. I don't know. <laughs> or we, we wait a year before releasing it. Yeah. it. Anyway. Um, Keep an eye out for that in a year's time. <laughs> she. F- <laughs> this is the first episode. She fits into all these factions, which makes her a threat well, to we the don't government. Know that yet, I Sorry, she's divergent, which makes her a threat by the government. And the government is run by a woman named Janine. Like your best friend's mum in year four. Who fights with your friend in front of you. Yeah, and like insists on like um, vaccinations being causing autism and like... No, she doesn't insist on it. She's just like, oh, hey, I've read a few studies. Yeah, yeah, and and like her friend, she's got one of those can I speak to the manager haircuts. Yeah, her friend Evelyn told her about it. Yeah, <laughs> and her house smells of like wheat bix Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in the end, Triss, and I'm skipping a lot here because I do not remember enough. In the end, Triss and her friends manage to cause up enough of a stir with Janine that they become fugitives. That's the very skeletal arc of Divergent 1. Yeah. In Insurgent, uh, now known fugitives, Triss decides to the best course of action is to wander around Chicago in broad daylight because, you know, that's what fugitives uh, want to do. Yeah, you don't want to be doing your shit at night. <laughs> Can't see anything. Uh, they, get a, <laughs> they end up getting a bunch of people on their team, most notably uh, the big players in Candor, um, which is the Honest Faction. Um, and on their team and they face off with Janine and a whole bunch of shit happens and they discover that Divergents are actually the saviors not the danger and that the entirety of Chicago has been an experiment so basically they find out that um, because Janine thought we had to kill all the Divergents Divergents it turns out that um, Chicago is an experiment by everyone outside of Chicago. They put all the all the factioned people in there, and that divergence actually means a step forward for humanity and not a yeah, they're, dangerous they're outlier. The cure. They're the cure. The solution, I think they call it. Uh, and it ends with Janine, who's played by 
Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet getting shot by Evelyn, who's played by Naomi Watts. As if to say, I'm the alpha female now. <laughs> and then we get to a legant. And in this one, Tris and her friends leave Chicago and go into the desert where they find another dystopia. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also ruled by yet another recognisable older actor. In this case, it's Jeff Daniels. Uh, the oh. first non-female male of these yeah, of, yeah. The, of the trilogies. Oh, there's quite leaders. a few non-female males in the film. And they all look exactly the same. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, the, and they learn that Triss is pure divergent, so 100% di- divergent. What are you touching me for? Oh, there was like dry skin on your ear or something. Oh, did you have to say it was dry skin? Could have been like, oh, there was... Toast. <laughs> There was like a kiss, on, a lipstick stain on your <laughs> neck. I just wanted to wipe off. Uh, they learned that Triss is pure divergent, hundred percent divergent. Well, we learned that in the second film, don't we? Yeah, but in this, they talk. They use the word pure. So, like, how, like you revealed that she fits into all five in your description for the first film. Yeah. And then talk about how oh, they and then, then they talk about how they learn it in the third film, but they learn it in the second film. <laughs> um, you spoiled it in the first one, and then you were too late. This, w- this podcast will contain spoilers for the Divergent. <laughs> um, and so uh, this, they knew that this dystopia is also evil and they end up saving Chicago again. This dystopia as, is evil. As the other dystopia tries to like spread a gas that will wipe everyone's memories so they can start again or something. A gen, I think. A gen. <laughs> and um, the they movie ends with them waging war on those who subjected them in the first place. So the the guys who made the experiment, they get all good with Naomi Watts. She becomes a good guy, I guess. And then they're like, hey, Jeff Daniels, we're coming after you now. And they never did. <laughs> and they never were. Well, so I, I feel like we need to kind of talk about here. Because of it, so... We need um, to talk about here. Yeah. I cut mine. Yeah, you've you got a real cool haircut at the moment, bro. Thanks. You look like... Um, one DJ Khaled? Of, no, you look like uh, one of the wildlings from Game of Thrones. It's not a reference I get. And but whose, whose fault is that? It's entirely my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was going to... Yeah, so um, what's it called? Uh, Divergent is a book series, consisting of three books, mm-hmm. and this franchise committed the, uh, the I ultimate sin. Oh, God, yes, this is the other trademark of young adult fiction movie adaptations of young adult fiction novels is that hey how are we going to make money off these films split the last one into two yep. which harry potter did start harry potter did twilight did it yeah hunger games did it yeah and then divergent tried to do it and so, maze runners just backing out altogether at the moment two films yeah. in i believe and they were, they they released a statement saying yeah we're not going to split the last one into, yeah. into two movies. Um, the reason for this is obviously money. I kind of get it with Harry Potter, though it's yeah, weird. Harry Potter, they, Harry Potter the, like, they, they took a huge book and yeah, divided yeah. it into two. But it's still not the biggest book, which yeah. is interesting. Um, and Breaking Dawn, bra- I think Breaking Dawn was longer than ha- than um, Deathly Hallows. Yeah, Breaking Dawn uh, had a good split point as yeah, well. Yeah. And, um, and you still got two okay films I'd say yeah, yeah. and um, then you go to Hunger Games Hunger Games and, is, is weird that's the tipping point yeah Hunger Games the final Hunger Games movie which was Mockingjay Part 2 flopped I don't know if it flopped but it didn't make a lot of money at the box office and, and a lot, a lot a of flop. there was a flop a lot of people were saying oh it's because it came out at the time in Star Wars but the, the demographics of those two things aren't necessarily the same and what you're seeing here is the world realising something that movie studios didn't think they would realise where they're going I'm not going to pay money to see half a movie half a movie and they are half a movie I've heard that Mockingjay Part 2 is awful I've they're, heard they're that both, they're both terrible that, yeah that Mockingjay Part 1 is slow and pandering Mockingjay and... Part 1 feels like half a movie yeah and if you didn't know how it ended you could be like I'm excited for the second half yeah and then but it's they took the worst book in the Hunger Games franchise yeah and split it into two terrible movies yeah people thought they were going to change the ending it's one of those films where I mean spoilers for the Hunger Games have you seen it? no I've seen, seen the first two so the third one, I think it actually might be, this plot might be conti- entirely contained in the fourth film, mm-hmm. but um, they go back into like the um, fucking capital or whatever, yeah. and then they um, they go on this big quest to go storm the capital, mm-hmm. right as they get there, someone else bombs it. Right. So they did nothing throughout the whole film, and then her little sister dies. 
good. which was the reason for the whole yeah, the, 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 yeah the heart of the yeah it's like um, so her, her sister gets killed in the bombing but like the whole movie is walking to go do something and then it's done by the time they get there and that's the end of the series yeah that and awful. but there's there, we'll, get, we'll talk about more when we get the Hunger Games as a franchise whenever that may be. But oh my god, Hunger Games, Mike and Jay Part Two has the weirdest fucking like epilogue. Okay, it's got a, it's like this. Oh, she's talking to like her baby, and she's like telling her about all the horrors of war that she's seen. Mm-hmm. But it's like smiling. And it's so poorly acted. <laughs> Um, um, so Divergent Divergent yeah. Divergent is a great franchise for us to talk about yeah so, so and also so another thing that um, uh, was the Hunger Games suffered as well because they called it Mockingjay Part 1 and Mockingjay Part 2 yeah um, and then uh, Avengers learned from it and Divergent tried to learn from it yeah. where they're not calling them Part 1 and 2 um, Divergent called a th- made up a fourth title they were going to call the fourth one Ascendant mm-hmm. and um, Avengers have now announced that um Infinity War isn't going to be part one or part two. It's going to be Infinity War and something else. There is a difference here where Infinity War isn't based on like a specific book. Yeah, but I feel like people don't want to go see a movie called part one. Yeah. Because, yes. Because it's probably, like... Probably, yeah. Because it's like, well, fuck, I've just got to like... Oh, it's just going to be a cliffhanger. I'll just wait till the next one. Yeah, and then I'll watch them both. I'll, I'll watch mm. it on DVD. Uh, yeah, I wonder. Um, but anyway... So, yeah, Divergent is a great franchise for us to talk about because it encompasses The Hunger Games, encompasses Maze Runner, Twilight, Harry Potter. Um, because, Star Wars. Yeah. What? what? Um, because while at least Mockingjay Part 2 was made and made no money, Divergent 4... May never be made. May never be made. And it, what, it, what we've got here sitting. is like a beautiful little... Um, it's plot hilarious twist in, in, that yeah, it is essentially in the in the history of filmmaking and the specific kind of yeah. filmmaking. So Ascendant uh, was announced to be um, they were potentially looking at doing it as a TV film, <laughs> and which is like oh my god! Imagine being Shailene Woodley. Yeah, you've signed on for the next Hunger Games. You're like, yeah, here's yeah. here goes my career. Yeah. I'm gonna be taken seriously as an actor. You've already been and, kicked so, off. Yeah, um, like, Spider Man. Like, yeah, she's like, <laughs> I need to get my franchise because you know everyone does their like. Um, their indie drama where yeah. they get their kid off yeah. and then they do the big franchise to earn a paycheck and, and get their name out there yeah. and then you sign on to it and then they say okay the fourth one is just going to be on NBC and for our American viewers TV3 for our local listeners mm-hmm. um, <laughs> they couldn't even get it on TVNZ um, that's how cheap it is <laughs> where did media works um, so they <laughs> oh, they might get careers one day with them um <laughs> I think their financial troubles are well documented. Okay. Um, so, um, anywho, Shailene Woodley has since pulled out of Ascendant. Mm-hmm. Um, Hilarious, and, because and it's, it's, I love that Shailene Woodley. Yeah. I love I, that Shailene Woodley doesn't care enough. That's so funny. That's so yeah yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's not like I, she's not like I have to see this through the end. She's like fuck. I, I didn't sign on to be on a TV show. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. Her quote was I didn't sign on to be on a TV show. Um, and now she's on Big Little Lies, which is a TV exactly, show. Exactly, but she signed on to be on a TV show there. Ah, okay. Um, sure. and, they, and then they make a big little lies movie and she's like I'm just silent <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this <laughs> um, big little lies like flops and gets turned into a radio show for its final <laughs> one um, yeah so that's kind of hilarious where that's sitting because it's like this is what you get yeah yeah that's what it is isn't it yeah. it's like this is what you get when you establish a shitty trope that messes with people's um, cons- consumption of entertainment you know, yeah. it's like, well, you tried to be a dick about it, and now, this now is no one's going to see your movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, do you know any like Divergent fans? Uh, I know people who have read it. But like, like, are they like fans of it, or they've just read it? I don't think I know anyone who. Because I know like I know like diehard Harry Potter fans, I know diehard Twilight fans, I know diehard Hunger Games fans. Yeah. I mean, obviously, who cares? Well, let's not talk about the matter anymore because no one knows about it. Um, <laughs> Wait, guys. It's like, he's he, the Maze Runner is the the black Ghostbuster of the of the, the big movies. Yeah, um, <laughs> that wasn't me being racist. That was Ghostbusters being racist. <laughs> um, it, but it's like um, uh, I was just going to tell a story. Okay. Do you know how I found out? Uh, well, I, I can't remember where I was going, so I'm just going to tell a story. Um, do you know how I found out about Twilight? Yeah. First I'd ever heard of it yeah. was I was going to see I was going to the movies. This was, this was the oh, it's Northlands in mm-hmm. Christchurch for our Christchurch viewers and um, listeners. And um, 
there was uh, I, I was waiting for my movie and there were all these posters around it was like um we go down to like the different to the actual cinemas mm-hmm. um that was plastered with the twilight poster which has obviously just been oh the twilight poster just been released and these girls came running up the stairs and kissed the posters and hugged them and took photos with them and i, I had and at this point i had no idea what twilight was and yeah. that's that's how and then i saw the poster and i was like Wow. Is this and because because I didn't even I didn't know it was based on a book. I was like, do they really like that that celebrity? I, I didn't get it at all. <laughs> um, and that's how I found out what Twilight was. Richard, never heard of it. what was your favorite movie in this in this trilogy? Um, I'd say probably Insurgent. Insurgent was definitely the catching fire of the franchise. Insurgent was better than Divergent a much better made film than Divergent and that's evidenced by the fact that we tried our damnedest to not actually pay attention to these movies and I couldn't really tell you what happens in Divergent whereas in Surgeon I, I feel relatively knowledgeable in the hmm. basic and I feel that Allegiant went too far Di- like Insurgent has a has actually a, an alright ending point the city walls get taken down the only kind of loose end you end up with is what's outside the city walls but I, I mean I could live with yeah, not knowing the Truman Show kind yeah, of ending yeah, exactly. you know like do it like that whereas like oh my god the cliffhanger at the end of a legend <laughs> is like trying so hard to be like a, a <laughs> cut to black sequel <laughs> but oh my gosh it's so do we want to explain what it is? Or is oh, it's not yeah, even if, worth it. If you can, she I don't know she's how to... they're all talking about like oh how now we're gonna rise, like rise up this, yeah. and da 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 and um and then she's like and I'm coming for you, Jeff Daniels. I know that you can hear me. And then the camera does this whip pan and you see Jeff Daniels behind her, but he's in a simulation where he can see them. And it stays on it for about a second and a half, and then not even that. <laughs> it's and then so, it, like, it looks so stupid. There, there, there was like these bits all throughout the film where to show they're on a sim, like it would distort a little bit. It does like, like artifacts. Little, just, and, it does, yeah, yeah, like artifacts and things. And it would do this little distortion, and then and then it cuts to like the credits. And it, oh man, I just cracked up. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, do you have the RT scores? Yeah. So we so, can um, know so what where, is what. What order would you go? I would go Insurgent, Allegiant, Divergent. Yeah, I'd just go Insurgent and then the other two. Yeah. Um, all right, so oh my god, this is so funny. So, Divergent mm-hmm. is on Rotten Tomatoes, is sitting at forty-one percent. Jesus, that's low as. How do you get a, a sequel? Did it make a lot of money? Uh, I'll t- we'll go through the these scores okay. and I'll talk about the money in a second. Um, uh, Insurgent is sitting at twenty-eight percent, mm-hmm. and then Allegiant at twelve percent. Wow. So, um, Divergent made eighty-five. Oh no, so this is the bu- budget of eighty-five million. The other two had a budget of one hundred and ten. Um, oh my gosh! What should we worldwide gross? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh! So worldwide gross, um, Divergent made uh, two hundred eighty-eight million. There you go. Um, Insurgent made two hundred ninety-seven million, and then Allegiant made one hundred seventy-nine million. So that makes it uh, all-time uh, North America gross. Yeah. Uh, Divergent is the two hundred eighty-third highest grossing film what a title Insurgent is the 392nd wow and Allegiant is the 1,088th <laughs> and it's it's all time worldwide ranking is TBA right I feel like that's an important segment which is I've, I've included in, in a couple of the ones I've done Talk about um, where it my... ranks like because Jurassic Park is the 10th highest franchise of all time oh yeah should we actually look Shrek at, look at the, where it as a franchise Shrek is the, the, the 13th highest franchise of all time all right, do you want to pay for time? Okay. Um, um, okay, so here's a, here's a problem with, with these movies is that no one is a real person. The only people you really can like in these movies are Triss, who's, pl- who's the main character played by Shailene Woodley, and Thor, who's her boyfriend. Everyone else either betrays them multiple times or is just a, like Miles Teller is in this movie. He plays a guy named Peter. And my goodness, it's like they wanted to have like the bad boy of the group, but he's so unlikable and he's so, and he betrays them. Not like at least one time you find out that his betrayal was a hoax and he's actually on their side and the, an insurgent. And then in um, Allegiant, he actually does betray them <laughs> so, and does all his character development. And on top of that, he's cast as Miles Teller. It's Miles Teller. You already want to punch in the face. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's one of my, my issues. Is actually like douche. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's like a yeah. Good actor, great actor, douchebag. Yeah. He's oh man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
We had some fun banter watching these movies. We did. I wish we could. We need to write down this banter, then say um, it to each other like it's the first. A funny time. one um, when in the first film, because um, oh, they have to go through this whole shit to get into Dawnless. Oh, and Jai yeah. Courtney's in it. We haven't even talked about oh, Jai Courtney. Beautiful Jai Courtney, an actor who I relish seeing on screen now because of how like like what disturbingly bad he is at acting yeah. and how like high his filmography is. Yeah. You know? So they're, yeah. they're like. Oh, I feel like we need to talk. So, to get to this funny banter we had, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, because what you, is you this take podcast? A, you take but a, funny banter. You take a test mm-hmm. to get into your faction. Yeah. And they tell you which one you are, and then Tris gets divergent, and they're like, "Oh shit, get out of here!" Yeah. Um, I'm wrong. The so, doctor's like, "I'm not going to tell anyone." Yeah. But don't tell anyone either. So, it tells you what what one you are. So you can be you're born into a faction, mm-hmm. um, and then you get a test telling you which faction you are. Mm-hmm. And then um, you cut yourself and bleed onto the one that you want to be in. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. You just pick whatever one you want yeah. anyway. And then um, so she chooses to be Dauntless, which looks like the fun one because when all the yeah. the the, um, the factions are showing up, they jump out of a train, and at, which so is at, apparently at the, the start, only way they know how to get around. Yeah, at the start, she's narrating about like telling the audience instead of showing the audience what um. All the, all, all the all the um, all the factions do, and when you see Dawnless, she's like, "I always wanted to be Dawnless," and you see them smiling and laughing and having fun. They look like a bunch of hoodlums running through the city. And then when she actually so gets in, like the soldiers. Yeah, yeah. When she actually gets in, it is. It's just soldiers. It's just like marching orders and don't smile. You know, yeah. take it seriously. And I was like, I would be so mad. I no. would be like, I'm not, I did not, I did not, I didn't sign on to be in, a, in an army. Uh, yeah. Like, I signed on to make friends and a life because yeah. it looked like they had fun at the start. Yeah. And so she has to go through all this training. And mm-hmm. part of it is, Jai Courtney goes, oh, you think you're such a big man, um, Tris? You got it. You, you go stand over there and I'll throw knives at you. Well, Four throws knives at her. And then... Um, this is before her and Four are a thing. Yeah. So he's like just this dick who keeps on like, yeah. you know. Um, but he's super dreamy. Yeah. Um, and so he throws knives at her, like just barely missing her. And at one point she, he cuts her ear. Like just a little bit. And then um, as they're walking away, um, she's like, you cut my ear. And he's like, I meant to. And then AJ, you were like... I said, well, then you're not a very good friend. Because, <laughs> because that's what this, the whole faction scenario felt like. It's like I'm soldiers, soldiers in their like barracks and stuff. I don't know. I guess I've never been a soldier, but I would always assume that they were bros yeah. and that was important because yeah, you yeah. want to like your fellow soldiers so that you save them. Mm. This is why um, the Greeks and Romans like made all these soldiers gay, like force, <laughs> force them to be gay because if, if you see your lover in battle, you're more likely to look out for him, right? Someone did classics. <laughs> and, and therefore, if you just do... <laughs> If you're in battle with the rest of your Dauntless buddies and the guy who threw a, a knife at your ear is, yeah. is getting killed... You let killed. me get shot? Yeah, I mean to. Yeah. yeah. How, does, how does it <laughs> oh, feel? Oh, no. Yeah, and then they end up um, and then the, the whole, sex. So the, whole, um, the whole rest of the film, every time the characters are talking, be like, oh, okay, oh, sorry, I, I thought we were friends, but whatever. Yeah. Um, we were talking before about where this ranks in franchises. Did you find that? No, out? there's not. Oh, okay, good. that's all good. I presume it's quite low. Yeah. <laughs> it's like second. Um... Uh, second to last <laughs> to last <laughs> imagine that I don't even I can't even comprehend there being a last yeah yet you know I guess there would be I oh, know there'd be equal ones there's gotta be equal ones no like, well, there, there's, money there's, there's when those, it gets into millions there's those films that like have technically only grossed a couple bucks yeah it'll yeah. be something like that yeah um uh another problem I have with this movie <laughs> is the casting yeah. So first of all, just a side note: all the uh, like ninety percent of the male actors all look exactly the same in the yeah. first so film. Ansel so Elgort, um, Miles Teller, Miles Teller, uh, Theo James, Theo James, Jeff Daniels. <laughs> no, he doesn't. In the first one, especially, like all the Dormus members are all oh, tall, tall white guys with dark brown hair, and it becomes very difficult to figure out who's dying. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a there's a big thing, big plot point about her shooting her friend Will. Yeah, and um, I, I thought, thought she Will sh- was I still alive. She sh- I sh- thought she shot her brother, who's Ansel Elgort, <laughs> um, until the second film when she has to um, tell yeah. everyone. While we're on that though, Ansel Elgort played um, her boyfriend in The Fault in Our Stars, yeah. and she plays her brother in 
Divergent, and these movies came out in this at the same time. And also, um, they make a, uh, she makes out Miles Teller in, in the spectacular in now. The spectacular now, and and he's in it. And like, I guess all's fair in casting and war, right? But like, when you've got all these movies in quick succession, like, I guess spectacular now is quite like. Not, not a lot of people have heard about that, so it's not too bad. Yeah. But the same people who are going to Divergent are going to The Fault in Our Stars. Yeah. And, and, the, and, the, and the people that would enjoy it don't have the mental capacity to understand yeah. that they're actors. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's it, to me, it's actually bad casting to cast her romantic lead from another film as her brother. And I actually think it was the other way around. So I think they cast her brother as the romantic lead. In the Fault in Our Stars, which is sad because I prefer him in the Fault in Our Stars. Yeah, but... he said he preferred playing her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's so weird yeah, to me, weird. and to me, it's like kind of gumpy casting to like yeah. do it that way. So we were talking about um, uh, about Shannon Willie not caring about mm-hmm. the franchise. So she cut her hair for the Fault in Our Stars, mm-hmm. and then in Insurgent in the book, she does cut her hair, but she cuts it to about the length that is in Allegiant, which mm-hmm. is like shoulder length. Mm-hmm. Um, but she has like this pixie cut, and she's like, "I don't want to wear a fucking wig. Just make it so it's this short." I lo- I'm in love with Jaylen Woodley, dude. <laughs> she's so funny. Whereas she's such an interesting actress, and I wish her the best. I hope she does something better than what she's done. But you know who does care about this franchise? Who? Kate Winslet. Really? She said, "She said, oh. put me in the third one somehow. I want to be in it." Kate Winslet. And they didn't. She was like, "Put a, put me in a flashback. Put me in a sim." <laughs> That's so weird that Kate Winslet would give a shit about this. Yeah, she she, she reeks of like, ugh, yeah. Yeah, for a paycheck. But apparently she wanted a film that kids could see. Mm. Well, they're having to see Mommy's Tits. <laughs> Mom, can we watch Titanic? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that was a weird lull. We haven't had one of these lulls since like episode since two. Since Little Women. <laughs> But you edited them all out. Take, <laughs> say something, Richard. Um, You're driving this one. So, uh, do we talk about titles? Yeah, we do talk about titles a lot. Nothing to talk about. With uh, these well, ones. What do you think of the whole the Divergent series? Oh, I think it's cool to call them something gent okay. each time. I don't mind it. Oh no, like calling it the Divergent series. Uh, unnecessary, but I get it from a marketing perspective. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would, I would go more for like Insurgent, and then like from you know the hit sequel to Divergent also, yeah just like, make it clear in the, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah because they are like it's not um, you know the Divergent games yeah, Hunger yeah. Games Hunger yeah, Ch- yeah. the titles are all too similar to just be like yeah. Divergent colon Insurgent <laughs> yeah Divergent Insurgent oh, yeah. like yeah Insurgent Divergent Allegiant Divergent and Ascendant Divergent yeah <laughs> yeah but the titles actually do all make sense within yeah the, the titles program. are well thought out and it's <clears throat> you wonder if like the author of the books like manipulated it so the titles could be relevant or if they came naturally like do you yeah, think yeah. she's like okay how do i call the second one insurgent what does insurgent mean someone who infiltrates the government oh yeah okay that's what the second one will be about yeah. that's a good plot that's a the insurgent's the best one it's it's the best idea for a sequel yeah, yeah. i think and i i say that it's got some cool scenes as well yeah and i like it um like I think Catching Fire is a bad idea for a sequel. Better movie than Hunger Games. Why, why, why do you think? Because it's Explain like Catching Fire. To so make Catching it Fire. So Hunger Games is about you. A bunch of people have to go and do a battle royale, and Catching Fire is like for the first time ever. Uh, previous winners of the Hunger Games have to face off again, and it's like it's just it's so like you know that we're doing it again sequel. Yeah, but it, it is like it's a better made film though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. The the idea of the Hunger Games, well, so the the idea of a quarter quell, as far as I'm concerned, is established in the as far as I know is established in the first Hunger Games because Hamish who's the idea of what a quarter quell. What's that? I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. Is um because Hamish so every twenty five years, so twenty fifth, fiftieth, and seventy fifth Hunger Games are all quarter quells, which means there's this something slightly different. So um, Hamish was um, which is. Uh, Woody Harrelson's character in the, the mm-hmm. films was a um, fought in, in the fiftieth in the second quarter quell, and um, I can't remember what his different thing was. Maybe it was like four people from each um, thing had to go in. Right. Um, whereas in the second one, it's kind of Donald Sutherland, um, Princess, Prince, Princess, Princess, President Snow, um, mm-hmm. asserting his dominance because he's like, "Oh, you think you're safe? Well, guess what? This one's a quarter quell, and I can make the rules whatever I want." And he says. Um, one a winner like it has to be pulled from a pool of previous winners which means that um, in because District 12 has only won 
twice, which yeah. was when Peter and um, Katniss both shared it and when Hamish won. Yeah. So they pick one of each gender from each um, thing. So this is saying, hey, guess what, Katniss? You have to go back in the arena. Because Why I'm, do I'm, you know so much about Hunger Games? Catching Fire is a good movie. Have you read them? No. Nah. But Catching Fire is real good. I've seen it. I didn't rate it particularly high. But, um, but yeah, I think that's a cool idea because it is like... Because cause obviously, you know, you, you think like, oh man, Hunger Games was good. Like, pretending you think Hunger Games is good. <laughs> but you think, they'd be like, how do we get it back in the arena? Yeah. And then it's it's kind of a cool way of of the hopeless, showing the hopelessness and the, also the... The problem is the that you have to get it back in the arena, I think. Yeah. That's the issue to me, is that Hunger Games doesn't beg for a sequel and it got one. Whereas Insurgents are more natural follow-on from Divergent. Yeah, you could say, well... <laughs> you could say that. You'd be wrong. You'd be you wrong. Say it. Um, yeah, I, well, I, yeah, I think um, the the what's it called the the, the Divert, and divergent re, uh, it reads as someone who read the Hunger Games. Yeah, and thought I can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is funny. But she, dystopian she future that. people um, are forced into yeah, like they 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 split into factions. Yeah, or yeah, uh, what are they called in? What are they called in Hunger Games? I, I just said it just before. Um, districts districts um, yeah and then they have to there's like a fucking battle there's the government it's run by a, a I want to know and then the second one is from what I understand what my very limited understanding of the Maze Runner yeah the second one's real close to the Maze Runner <laughs> I want to know which of the divergent um, factions I fit into me too Let's get out our phones. <laughs> okay, hold on, mine's over there. Hold okay. my, oh, don't hold my book, you'll read my notes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, and play along at home. Play, um, please. I'm Googling BuzzFeed, Divergent Faction. Um, so there's, you'll see a couple of quizzes. There's, di- which, there's which Divergent Faction do you belong to? Which Divergent character is your soulmate? The Divergent Aptitude Test. And which Divergent Faction do you actually belong in? <laughs> so I feel like we should do the actually one, right? Okay, sure. So, which divergent faction do you actually belong in? So, we'll play along to get. Ow, oh, fuck. What's the matter? Oh, this chair pinched my. It's still doing it. Oh, my Pinched gosh. my butt. They got like. The, the chair got caught between my, my belt and my, my skin. <laughs> Alright, so, you, which divergent faction, faction do you actually belong in? Okay, first. Alright, question, question one. What colour do you wear most? You've got black, red, white, blue, grey, whatever's cheapest. Um, um, and I've got Summit Entertainment under whatever's yeah. cheapest. Yeah. That's because it's a guy using a photo from oh, the right, film. Oh, right, I see. Uh, I'm going to go grey. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go... Surely that cheapest. doesn't have anything to do with what faction you Pick have. a phone app, text, Instagram, Google, Facebook, quiz up, weather. Facebook. Um, I'm going to go... Yeah, Facebook as well, I guess. Pick an emoji. Sun, it's um, glasses, not sunglasses. Um, lips, a smiley face. A family, a ring, and the um, angry with um, steam coming out of his They're nose. All, they all say apple on mine. That's very confusing. None of them are apples. Uh, I'm going to go with the, the snorting one. I'm going to go with the sexy lips. What do you value most? Oh, this is just so dumb because it's just fucking listing the faction. <laughs> uh, selflessness, kindness, revenge, honesty, bravery, intelligence. I'm going to go kindness. Uh, I'm going to be honest and go revenge. <laughs> What's your sin? Gluttony, pride, sloth, envy, greed, wrath. I don't know if we're re- I want to reveal all this on the podcast. What if it's lust? Uh, I feel like mine... That's yeah. prob- <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go... go... I'm going to go... Um, uh, I'm going to go sloth. I'm going to go wath. Okay. Am I am I wrathful? I don't know, man. I, I can't, be, I can't I, be bothered I'm gonna do, I'm going to do gluttony. I'm too... I'm too Pick a TV show. Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Law and Order, Girls, Revenge. I don't watch TV. Girls, Breaking obviously. Bad. No, Breaking Bad. Uh, what are you guilty of? Telling lies to make people feel better. Being blunt. Acting before thinking. Spending more time at your job than with friends. Quitting too easily. Putting others' needs before yours. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go... What are you going to go? I'm going to go quitting too easily. I'm going to say being blunt. Okay. What's your dream job? Lawyer, I just want a job. <laughs> Volunteer work, doctor, police officer, astronaut. None of them? I'm going to say I just want a job. I'm going to astronaut. <laughs> Pick your poison. Beer, water, wine, tea, shots, coffee. I'm going to go tea. Coffee? I'm going to go tea. Pick a superpower. Shape shift, influencing minds, super strength, teleportation, healing have... powers, read minds. Well, none of them are fucking <laughs> telekinesis, which is the best one. <laughs> Uh, so I guess I'm going to go... I actually reckon teleportation I probably use the most. 
Yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Pick a phrase you say the most. You look so nice. I dare you. I knew that. I know you're lying. Can you help me? Need help? I'm going to say, I knew that. I'm going to say, can you help me? <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. I'm, so, I'm, I'm not factionless. Same. <laughs> I'm that's factionless. Dumb as hell. That's okay. Uh, so, so it says you got factionless. Factionless is a status in which a person is not welcome to any faction. The factionless live an impoverished life and are forced to do the low paying jobs no one wants, such as factory workers, truck drivers, and janitors. They are homeless either because they failed their faction initiation or they chose their fate with opposing views of their society and how it's run. Their community has become the largest in the city. Maybe they're right then. Um, and their thirst for revenge has great consequences. See, that... Okay, I understand how that would be me. That is a great microcosm for what's wrong with the narrative of this series. Yeah. And that's that no one fits into one faction. And even in just doing a quiz that was designed to, like... You know, I was in it. I was one, I was like, yeah, this will be fun. I got factionless, because I'm assuming Divergent isn't one of the options you can get. I wonder if it would be. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to get it. Yeah. Because everyone's a freaking divergent. And in the third one, they're like, yeah, everyone was once divergent. And it's like, yeah, no shit. Like, it's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, no shit. The goal shouldn't be... The goal of a dystopia should never be, like, you are less than what the world once was. Well, maybe it should be. Maybe that... Maybe... No, you know what? That is the goal of a dystopia. But that's like an alien's understanding of how to write... Or a robot's understanding of how to write a story. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, of course that's the goal. But you can't you can't put it into such, like, scientific clinical terms yeah. as factions. Because it's not realistic. AJ, so I'm doing the other the other test. The what one do you belong in? Not, yeah. You know, if I actually belong in factionless, whatever. But, um... Okay, if I were to ask anyone on this podcast, anyone listening, yeah. what's the first thing you do when you wake up? What would you answer? Open my eyes. Brush my teeth. Eat breakfast. Get out of bed. I don't know what you want me well, to see, say. Well, see, I would say go to the toilet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you? Like, oh, it's not the first thing I do. So it says take a shower, brush your teeth, grab some coffee, check your work. phone, go for a jog, get dressed. Actually, to be fair, I'd probably check my phone before I go to the toilet. You win this round, BuzzFeed. Truth or dear? Truth. Do I go dear? No, actually, truth. Whatever. I'm a pussy. You wouldn't go truth. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking dear. pussy. Yeah. Um, choose you're, a career. You're so factionless, bro. <laughs> you're such a, um, you're such a amity, bro. You're a fucking. No, you're an abnegation, bro. Oh, thank you. Selfless. None of them are, are negative traits. I'm gonna cross out selfless and write the pussy faction. <laughs> and not in the fun way. Not in the fun way. Choose a career. I'm gonna go. I'm worried this isn't good podcast listening, bro. Just well, you, race hey, through it. You're also doing it. Um, I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. My phone's in my pocket. You know, but I'm saying you're also not adding to the podcast. Um. Well, <laughs> you're being you're being like I appreciate your candor, dude, but you're being a real erudite right now. See oh, how hard I, is this to follow? I just got candor, well, so I am being candor. I would put you in candor. Really? Yeah, I think I would put you in candor and I would put myself in either amity or abnegation. Uh, see, I think probably one of my worst traits is that I lie a lot. <laughs> okay. But I'm also brutally honest. Mm, what a what a what a balance. See, I think I think the thing is that I'll lie to hurt your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me seem honest. Well, and what's an instance where you've lied to hurt my feelings? I thought, AJ, you lie like shit today. When you've actually looked very handsome. Oh, you should have told me that. No, it's never come up. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just, it's, in, in theory, I would lie to hurt your feelings. Right. If I saw you looking like you were enjoying your day, yeah. I'd be like, don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, I, my I can see that. Yeah, I can see you doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. So, um... Just chuck in my, my... You're editing this one, so I don't <laughs> care if you clap. You can clap. I always way. clap on the podcast now. Um, so, I'll wiggle the cord as well. You were listening to the wiggle of my new 5 meter USB cable that I Oh, is that what that week? was in the mail? Yeah. Um, so, I've decided to do something a little bit different this week. Uh, I'm a... Um, I'm a... Any of the factions. Doesn't matter. I don't like change. So what I've decided to do, because um, because the 
continuation of this franchise does exist. You could go read the second half of The Legend if you wanted mm -hmm. and figure out uh, how this book ends and also just the... It's, Do you know how so, it ends? No, and I don't care. I think Triss dies. I what? think she Christs herself. Oh, uh, well now I've got to look it up. I think I remember someone being like, yeah, I read the last Diversion book and Triss dies and it was just really stupid because it wasn't like sacrificial enough and it just kind of didn't give a good message to the young girls who'll be reading it. But I could be wrong and not know what I'm talking about. What? Well, so, what? What? Oh, God. Do you think they're going to recast Triss and That's the the, She's just not going to be on. <laughs> um, this post is all about the end of your religion, which if you don't want to spoil it, blah, blah, blah. Um, wow. Veronica Rottenbroth signed on for a whole new level of internet infamy when she, seriously, spoilers, killed protagonist... Protrag project Protagonist. Protagonist. Triss at the ending of Allegiant. There you go. The that's trilogy ending book that is currently being turned into a hopeful movie franchise. Hopeful, that's the, so the perfect word for it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, readers aren't pleased. Six days after the book's release, you said, yep. This is what's always going to happen. Uh, Triss dies. Uh, Natalie dies. Triss dies in the weapon lab. It's because of her journey. It's complete. She's making the sacrifice for the right reasons. As opposed to Caleb, or as opposed to her younger self, an insurgent, at the end she had blah, 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 Roth. Um, wow. I wish I cared more. <laughs> so, um, Triss dies okay. at the end of Allegiant. So, um... Because there already isn't a continuation to this franchise, and because it's just so funny that it's being a TV movie, I don't think we, either of us can top that. Yeah, like, yeah. neither of us could come up with a funnier idea yeah. than <laughs> it gets released as a TV movie. So what I decided to do is I pitched it to you the other night um, to come up with me for a continuation of the genre. So I want, I want you to pitch to me, and I'll do the same for you, pitch to me your dystopian young adult franchise. Mm -hmm. Um... Just give me a kind of, if you can, give me a brief rundown of the overarching plot and why the last film, and you need to explain to me why the last film needs to be split to two. Yeah. I didn't ask you to do that, but I'm asking you now. You need to give me the up and coming star that, um, throws, that's going to start on That away. throws a, his, or her, his or her career away. The um, older actor who um, is trying to make a buck and give me the rules of the dystopia. Okay. I don't have a name for it. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Well, no, we we can come up with one together, yeah. maybe. Um, so the first book slash film is set in a mine. Okay. <laughs> it's, there's miners and basically everyone is either blind, deaf or dumb. You're, you're one of each. <laughs> you're, you're not all three. So there's characters who are blind, but they can speak and hear. There are characters who are deaf, but they can see and speak. And there are characters who can speak, but they can't. They, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's speak no evil, hear no evil, whatever no oh, evil. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so they're, they're, they don't have to be dumb, they can be mute. Yeah, they're mute, that's what I mean. Yeah. What's the difference between dumb and mute? Uh, dumb is like disabled. Oh, okay. oh, actually, I don't know. I don't think it is. I think dumb's just mute. It's a different word. Anyway, um, the main character is a girl, and she's played by Joey King, who is the lead girl, the, um, the Colin Hanks' daughter in Fargo, and she's in oh, Wish I Was Here. She's mm -hmm. currently 17, so she's, you know, like, yep. up and... Ready to throw a career away. Yep, yep. Um, uh, and they work in mines, and the reason that they... So they either have their eyes sewn shut, their mouth sewn shut, or their ears sewn shut. Um, and the reason for that, I haven't quite worked out, but it's something to do with, like, what they're mining is top secret. And so, bear with me, because I didn't really ever write any of this down. I was just thinking about it. Um... The, each part of their process ensures that the secret won't get out because the people who are mining it at the core are blind so they can't see what they're mining up and the people who maybe take it up are deaf so they can't tell anyone what it is because they don't know what it is. They can just see it. Well, they, yeah, they can see it but they don't know yeah. how it's used. Yeah, yeah, and then the people who can't speak take it to the higher-ups because they can't tell anyone. They know what it is and know how to deal with it but they can't tell anyone what it is. Nice. And the lead actor in it, who's an older actor, is just trying to, trying to make a quick buck, is Mark Ruffalo. Uh, and he maybe he's the leader of the mine. And he's the emperor nice. of the mine. Um, the second book, they escape and they get on land with the main characters. And there's, there's one of each 
of the different types of characters. So maybe maybe Joey King's character is a mute. No, she, they'd want her to talk. She's probably the blind one. That's probably the most accessible for a protagonist. I reckon make her the mute. Yeah? Okay. Um, so she's the mute, and she's up there with her two friends who are deaf and blind. Um, well, actually, no, I feel like the, the mute has to be a badass Asian dude. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Maybe there's a bunch of them. Maybe there doesn't have to be a clean yeah. three. Um, and then the second one's sitting on the ground where they're seeing what the things they're mining for are being used for. Um, and it's not good. And, and there are people who maybe they can't smell. <laughs> They've got a nosmia. Yeah, yeah. And no, their nostrils are so shut. And then the third book is set in the sky. <laughs> and it features characters who can't poop. <laughs> they go up to the sky and there's characters who can't taste. Maybe. I don't know. Well, so the, the They've third, got their the tongues cut book. out. The third book has characters who can't um, taste and can't feel. Yeah. And they split into two movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't think about splitting it. I didn't even think about transcending yeah, it beyond yeah. a, no, a single story. Anyway, what do you think we could call it? What's a good uh, title for it? Minor 49er. <laughs> Is that a Scooby-Doo bad guy? That's a Scooby-Doo 2 missing on leash bad guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, Minor 49er. No, um... The underground, the overground, the above... The, the underground, the ground, the overground. <laughs> the above, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the overground part two. <laughs> yeah. The, the, all, all I try and do the divergent thing and be like the, the way overground. The way overground, right. Um, like instead of calling it part one and part two. Anyway, so don't see half uh, that, a bit of that was, before I get called out on this, a bit of that was inspired by uh, Oddworld Abe's Exodus, but I feel enough of it is no. original enough. In Old World Abe's Exodus, um, the creatures known... This is a video game, by the way. Uh, the, the creatures known as Mudakins, who are like the main characters. Um, some, of, some of the miners uh, have their eyes sewn shut because they're actually mining up Mudakin bones and they don't know what they're mining. It's dark. Yeah. It's a lot darker than um, Underground. But Anyway, what's your one? Uh, my one... Um, so it's set in a dystopian future. Mm-hmm. Um, where everyone is cloned at birth. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, Everyone's played by Miles Teller. <laughs> <laughs> or, um... What's her name? The Fat Amy. Don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know, know her name. Just oh. Fat Amy. Um, so no, so everyone's cloned at birth. And for some reason, the, um, the clones are split off. And so it's like, maybe... I feel like the, the clones have to be treated bad in some sort of way. And like, like, they, like harvested for organs, or, or like, or maybe no, no. There's something happened, and so everyone's a twin, like in the island. So yeah, yeah go on. No, it's like in the island. I just, I'm, mine's just the island. Is it? No, I can't. I don't know. It's okay. So everyone's a twin, and then um, everyone gets split off. Um, well, basically, the, the kind of plot I thought of was so Lucy Hale. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Um, she's on the I, on, on an IMDb list of top twenty five prettiest under twenty five actors. Oh, what's she? What's she been? Pretty, uh, pretty Little Lies, I think. Okay. Um, was she Pretty Little Lies from Sister of the Traveling Pants? No. Ah. Oh. Maybe. Ah. Oh. I'm back in. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any nudity in it? <laughs> no. Ah. Oh. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> male or female? Um, both yeah uh, just female <laughs> um, yeah so they have um, but anyway so Lucy Howe's character would like finally rise up against um, the, the, the the dictator government what dictator government led by, that splits them up oh, okay and it's led by um, Ewan McGregor Ewan McGregor trying to from the him. island <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, and then um, so Lucy Hale, who plays a character called, um, Grand Doc. Grand Doc? Yeah. That's worse than Triss and Katniss. Yeah, I know, yeah, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make something on par or, or, with, or worse. And then, so Grand Doc and her, um, friends, Cal. <laughs> and <her> Keenan. Lo- <laughs> no, Cal, C-A-L. Uh, her love interest, Cal, uh, they... They take over the the government led by Yo McGregor, and they um they reveal the horrible truth that's happening to the the clones or the twins. But then it would be revealed that she like doesn't have a belly button and she was a clone or something. Anyway, it's called the Clone Wars. <laughs> it's got Yo McGregor. It's got Ewan McGregor. I don't know. 
I just thought it'd be like it'd be a cool twist to find out. I feel like you client. set this hard challenge and I delivered and you just didn't try with it. I did try. <laughs> I thought about it while I was driving this morning. So I think because like, I was like, okay, well, no, honestly, honestly, mm-hmm. to level with you. Yeah. I was thinking about what a teenage girl is like. Yeah. Knowing that they're different. Yeah. So it's That's a, a okay, let's it's a this. world set where. Um, everyone has an exact a, a person exactly like them, mm-hmm. and so, and then that, that, that's just, that's where that came from. I was thinking about you know basing mm-hmm. it like sending it to teenage girls, and then so I thought, okay, what if everyone had a double for some reason, and then uh, there's something like that, and then we find out that our main character was actually one of the doubles. So then this, this, the odds are stacked even yeah. more against her to be her own person. All right, I like it. Um, how are you going to make teenage boys go see it? Lizzie Hale. Is she attractive? Probably. She's an actress. <laughs> um, Alright. Okay. Yeah. So, some thought went into it. This has been probably the most creative film franchise Fortnite's we've had. Yeah, this is the first time we've both kind of actually come up with something for the... <laughs> and I kind of like mine. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, can, I could see... I could be happy if I was hired to write that. I wouldn't on my own volition, but... If someone listened to this and was like, I love it, can I buy it off you? I'd be like... If someone wanted the rights to the Clone Wars, I'd be like, take them. I'm not fuck. I would like, I, I'd be like, if you can come up with a storyline based on that, good luck to you. But it doesn't matter because no one listens to this. And oh, I was gonna say no one watches young adult movies anymore. But oh, I'd say more people will watch them and listen to this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Allegiance still made friggin' ninety-two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. We can't even get 92 listens. <laughs> uh, no, nah, anyway, we have fun. So, uh... It's fine, I'm not even mad. So, we're, um... We should probably wrap it up here. Is there anything else you wanted to say? We could split this one into two parts. Well, oh, can we actually call this one, like, um... No, AJ I'm Richard not messing re- with the freaking branding. Um, like Asian, yeah, like film franchise Fortnite's the Divergent series part one, and never released part two. I'm not, I'm not messing with our branding. Not That's after so... that, how annoyed I get with titling. Anyway, so this is part one. Um, so uh, we're not going to do franchise roulette mm-hmm. for this episode. Uh, it's still unconfirmed at this point, but we potentially have something special coming next week. Um, if it falls through, we'll just do an off pod franchise roulette and. We'll come here with something random next week. Okay. Do we want to say what we're trying to do? Uh, Not no. who it's with, but what franchise it is. Oh, yeah, it'd be Boondock Saints. Boondock, Boondock, Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. Down the Boondocks. Mm-hmm. Saints. Okay. I don't know what they're about. I, there's two films. I've... Boondock Saints and Boondock Saints 2, All Saints Day. Yeah. And um, it's got Nor- Daryl from the... Norman? Oh, did, uh, Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. Um... Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, don't watch the Divergent series. That's my piece of advice to you. Because don't, you know what? Don't feed a conglomerate that doesn't care enough about making, that cares more about making money than making good films. Yeah. And that's the lesson we learned from Divergent. That's the lesson that um, Shailene Woodley is, is is helping spread. Shailene, if you're listening, um, I, borderline, I borderline have an actual crush on you. And um, I'm I'm going to watch all of Big Little Lies, so, you know, um, please keep being in that. I hope, it, I hope, it, I hope it's good. Um, I hope she dies in episode two. And <laughs> I hope she dies in the fourth Divergent. Um, I, ha- I wish the best for Shailene Woodley. Do do something great. I mean, it's funny that she's also in it with Miles I, Teller. I'd say she'd have an Oscar nom in five years. Okay. Within the that's, next that's five good. Years. That's, that's good. Cool. Um, Miles Teller's also the, kind of the king of failed franchises. Yeah. So... Yeah, he's, he's, he's too, doing, mate. You listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was talking about Fantastic Four. I'm right? waiting for Rabbit Hole Two, Miles. <laughs> uh, Miles, I, I think you're a good actor, but I don't like your face. Um, so <laughs> use that to your advantage. Yeah, mate. but play just play more more douche characters. Yeah, like he probably has a bright future in like frat boy comedies. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Miles. I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Yeah, for Miles Teller is the next Vince Vaughn. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. If you liked this, um, you can actually support us on our Patreon, which we've just launched. Really? No. <laughs> I'm not going to launch a Patreon when the most views we have is like 86. 
<laughs> That's embarrassing. You can make eighty six dollars. I'm not. I'm not launching a Patreon to where like bar have six thousand views per per episode. Yeah. If that ever happens, but you can help us get there. Um, and the way you can do that. <laughs> Is by subscribing to our this YouTube 6, channel. Thousand times. <laughs> you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is called Cult Popsha. Uh, you can. That's also the name of this podcast. Technically, every off week, um, we do. If you're listening to this on YouTube, um, find us on SoundCloud or iTunes because every second week, like every time we're not doing f- uh, the franchise Fortnites, we're actually doing just a random cool little conversation. Like uh, last week, you would have heard if you listened. Um, Richard and Jess talked to our friend Joe about uh, Power Rangers. We've also done a discussion about um, live action Disney movies and why yeah. that's happening. I think we'll be getting to the, um, what's it called, the Should Joe Go See? It's quite a good yeah. um, thing. Maybe you should go see Beauty and the Beast and we can do it next week. Okay, I will. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're doing at the moment. We also have a Facebook page where you can find a lot of this stuff too. And we're. I want to be like, and we've got heaps of cool stuff that's going to come out this year. But you know what? I don't do this full time and can't and you promise you say anything. that every year. <laughs> I did it last year. I did Cold Popcorn. Check out Cold Popcorn. That's one one minute long video. Is there a season two coming? There might be. If, 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 if I get it. Like, I don't know. I kind of hope it would do better. Well, so we're approaching, I believe, one year of this podcast. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Be on a make out or something. Get off me. Um, yeah, so, the and again, if you want to support us, the, really the only way to do it is to tell your friends. Um, Should we do a one year anniversary? Why? We not... visit Lethal Weapon or something? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we can talk about this later. I'm trying to be professional. Yeah. Um, yeah, share it with your friends. Tell your friends about it. Tell people who you think would like about it. Is this book S- supposed subscribe. to be like anything? Or rate, or just a, just a pack rate us on iTunes. I don't know. There's a, there's a birthday present. Right. Oh, sorry. Big off there. Emily. My sister. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. And good night. Do you need to